Competition is the name of the game. Here in the United States, our phone market is heavily influenced by the carriers. So it's not much of a surprise that the two companies spending the most on marketing have also locked up the best deals with carriers to promote their products. It's easy to lose sight of the other phone options people might have to get the features they want and also shop around for deals. Or maybe you're just bored with the current popular options and you wanna try something different. While a few other companies still exist, to shop, you should take advantage of that competition. Here are our top five underrated smartphone options in the United States. And while you're shopping a deal on your next phone, we hope you'll keep up with all the work here on reviews.org. You know, hit those subscribe options down below, follow us around the socials, and, and check in on our home site reviews.org we've got a great team making you some really cool stuff and hopefully saving you some cash along the way here's the deal i'm a phone nut i don't like that youtubers keep pushing the most expensive options on people while talking about average consumer use i also don't think that just because one option proves popular that it means it's the right fit for everyone i also get really bored with this idea that a phone only does phone things, and then you need a tablet to do tablet things, and then you need a computer to do the computer things. Compute power is compute power, and we're paying a lot these days for a stupid amount of compute power in our pockets. I'm personally happy to spend a lot on a phone if it can replace my need to always carry a laptop and a camera around to get my work done. But also just philosophically, no gadget gets better without pressure from competitors. So that was enough rambling preamble. Without further ado, here's our top five other brands for you to shop on your next phone. You might not have realized some of these companies were still around. Number five, TCL. Now TCL might not be known to many folks outright for phones. They have a great reputation for TVs. This company has worked as an ODM, an original device manufacturer building phones for other labels, but recently they've started badging their own entry-level and mid-ranger phones. You'll see them a lot, often as the low-cost or free phone options on carriers. The company's overall vibe, solid daily driver performance, very good screens and multimedia features, they're a television company, and some useful lifestyle perks. At the time this video was shot, they were offering some of the best bang-for-buck pricing on 5G capable phones. Number four, one of the most respected names in consumer electronics, Sony. Not only do they still make phones, they make some of the best enthusiast devices for media fans and photographers. Now, we are talking about premium priced gadgets. They're regularly some of the most expensive phones you can find, but an Xperia carries a terrific balance of bleeding edge technology while still retaining lifestyle features like headphone jacks and memory card expansion. The Xperia team now works very closely with the Sony mirrorless camera division, and their phones shoot photos and videos very similarly to the Sony Alpha cameras. They still have the two-stage shutter button on the phone, it feels a lot like a camera. You're not gonna find these in carrier stores, but Sony still sells directly to the USA. You can find them on B&H. So if you do some shopping where people go to buy cameras, you can also find trade and deals and combos with the excellent Sony earbuds and Sony headphones. Xperia's are easily the most unique phones sold today, which might turn some folks off for being less familiar, but Sony's are absolute champs when it comes to performance. Number three, once the darling of budget enthusiasts, OnePlus has grown into a well-rounded brand offering phones at a variety of price points. The OnePlus Nord is a solid lineup of budget options, while the proper flagship phones compete extremely well against similarly priced Samsungs and Apples. Better than just offering a comparable phone at a slightly lower price, OnePluses are carrying more advanced and enthusiast features, great cameras, good gaming performance, and some of the fastest charging available in North America. Brief example, take a OnePlus 10 Pro against a Galaxy S22 Plus, and the OnePlus is gonna have a better screen, a camera that can shoot slow motion video in 4K resolution, a bigger battery that charges twice as fast as a Galaxy, and at full MSRP, 
it's $100 cheaper before sales or trade-ins. Likewise, the OnePlus 10T at $650 is a monster performer against base model galaxies and iPhones, which are both noticeably more expensive. OnePlus no longer carries the budget flagship killer enthusiast crowd, but the phones are great direct competitors now. Number two, another classic brand, Motorola has settled into a comfortable role of also offering good bang for buck daily driver phones. It's a label you'll regularly see in carrier stores and their mid-ranger phones often highlight durability and fantastic battery life. This year, they delivered a surprisingly robust premium phone in the 2022 Edge Plus. A priced near the Galaxy S22 Plus, the Edge, one of the most powerful phones of the year, has support for a proper stylus pen, faster charging, the best desktop mode of the year in Ready 4, and 512 gigabytes of storage, often found for $100 less than the 128 gig comparable Samsung. That Samsung with much slower charging and obviously lacking active pen stylus support. Moto's parent company, Lenovo, has been releasing new folding phones and an Edge Ultra in China, but given the structure of the market here in the United States, it's unclear, probably unlikely if we'll ever get those phones here, which is really a shame. Moto is maintaining their business grade reputation, making some of the best productivity phones available. Wrapping up our list, Google gets a nod for the Pixel. Now, Android can be a bit scattered, different manufacturers, different bits of software, but you can get hardware. You can get a phone from the company that makes the Android core software. Recently, Google has also started designing their own bespoke processors to better showcase Google services. This is the most googly a phone can get and customers are treated to the earliest advancements in assistant, AI, services, and camera processing. Google also earns a solid rep for software support. When new updates are out, older pixels get those updates relatively fast compared to newer phones and especially compared to older competing devices. More than just bug fixes or putting a new number at the end of an Android OS update, Google delivers new features to phones by way of their Pixel drops. Of all the companies making phones right now, I actually do think Google has earned the best reputation for improving the performance of older phones over time. This is my top recommendation for folks interested in the easiest auto HDR camera tech and the call screening and hold features turn a smartphone into a shockingly smart personal assistant. The pixels have been getting real good, and it's also just nice to see Google putting just a bit more effort into marketing these phones. And just because we put this list together doesn't mean other phone brands are less gooder. It's hard for consumers to get better information on other labels the way Americans often shop phones through their carrier. Not every company can spend $10 billion a year just marketing their brand. ZTE delivered an ultra tier device on a much more reasonable budget. And that Axon 40 has one of the coolest tricks you'll ever see on a front screen where you can't see the selfie camera. Kyocera continues to make great, rugged workhorse devices still manufactured in Japan. This little label Unihertz making keyboard phones for people who want the best tactile communication and messaging experience. And folks can shop some powerhouse gaming hardware from Asus, Black Shark, or Red Magic. The fun for me, I think the fun of comparison shopping, you know, shopping around like this, is seeing the variety of options and realizing a phone isn't just one thing. Like laptops, there are streamlined communicators, productivity solutions, content creators, and multimedia or gaming devices. Instead of thinking about a phone that just does the phone things, I think you get a better experience when you think about your pocket computer like the little power bar graphs on the back of a Transformers box. Every phone carries different pros and cons, and there really isn't one winner phone that everyone will just broadly like. Smartphones are already commodity products. It's not a disruptive technology anymore. It's the established technology that probably needs a little outside disruption. If you're spending a lot on a phone, I believe that phone should do a lot. The modern smartphone can genuinely displace 
other computers and cameras that cost even more when you're looking at working on the go. If your needs aren't that intense, a reasonably priced mid-ranger is going to deliver great daily driver performance. It's still gonna be overkill powerful for messaging and social media. It's gonna have solid cameras. And best of all, because it's not running the most powerful processors and graphics chips in the phone, you're going to get even better battery life. Think of all your family and friends, how many of them are saying, you know what I need is 10% more compute power. Or do you go to that same person and say, hey, do you want like two days of battery life? What's really gonna be more important to you? I think most of those average consumers are gonna be way happier getting double the runtime, and then the fact that they'll spend less on that phone is an even better perk. It's the last point to kind of wrap up this video. We need to do a better job of acknowledging good competition when we get it. It's not enough to get all of these awesome phones and then go, yeah, but the most populars are these two brands. We need to point out these features are better on this device, those features are better on another device. Because it's never really good for a market to get too lopsided. You never want one or two companies to win. That has almost universally been bad for consumers whenever it happens. We're seeing phones launched internationally with exciting new features, radical new hardware, incredible new cameras, and almost none of those phones are gonna get sent here. The United States is slipping as a market for bleeding edge consumer phone tech. A lot of those companies are breaking sales records while completely ignoring North America. When we can, I think it's important to vote with our wallets and find those opportunities where we can kind of shake up the current carrier market. It takes a bit more effort, it takes a little more research, but it's really fun when you nail the vibe and you get exactly the right gadget for your needs. And of course, we want to hear from you. Have I missed any alternative phone brands? Is there a company outside the mainstream that you enjoy Drop us the tastiest of hot takes down below. As always, thanks so much for watching, for sharing these videos, and subscribing to the channel. For Reviews.org, I'm Juan Carlos Bagnell, aka Some Gadget Guy, and I will catch you all on the next video.